Welcome. Our next talk will be about the DBN long time uh, support team. And the speaker is Raphael Herzog. Hello. So yes, today I will speak a bit about Debian long-term support. I guess most of you already know. Are, are there some people who have no idea what, it, what this is about? Oh, good. So I will make my talk in three parts mainly. First, I will present the team, how it works. I will uh, also give some facts about how it evolved over the first years. I took some time to collect the statistics. I believe they are rather interesting. Uh, I will also speak about the future, but there will be a separate discussion about this in a both later this week. And I will show you how to help, because uh, like any other team in Debian, it's open to anyone. And we welcome help. At the end, I will answer your question. <coughs> so first part, what is long-term support our, about? What were the problem when we created the team and the choice we made? So the idea is really simple. We wanted to extend the support period of all Debian releases. So you know currently it's basically uh, one year until the next stable release comes out. And we wanted to extend this to five years to match at least Ubuntu suffering, which is uh, not our competitor, but for the companies who are Medi making choices, it's one of the important criteria. So we wanted to do as well. Uh, well, basically it's one year next to s after the next table, but since we uh, publish new stable release uh, every two years, it's roughly three years. Uh, a nice side benefit is that a uh, user can skip a full release uh, while we don't officially support this upgrade over, over uh, going from Debian 6 to Debian 8, uh, you can do two disk upgrades at the same time and limiting the downtime to once every five years. Uh, <coughs> by the way, in practice, uh, disk upgrades tend to, on server, on simple server configuration, tends to work rather well, even across uh, two releases. So keeping the distribution secure for five years is a real challenge. Uh, it is hard work that not everybody is willing to do. I mean, in Debian, all the work is done by volunteers, and volunteers do the work they enjoy. And ge generally, we enjoy working on new features on top of latest release, and not really on backporting patches to code that was written five years ago. The security team has limited resources, so we could not just ask the, release the security team to, hey, so no, do twice the work. <laughs> but still, they were really interested in the, in the project and wanted to support uh, <coughs> the idea and really helped to get it bootstrapped. And the security team has a slightly larger scope. Uh, they support all architectures, which means uh, that you have a lot of problem of coordination when uh, security updates do not compile and stuff like that. So what did we do? We restricted the, uh, the scope by picking the two most popular architectures that, re that most users care about. We have, we have had some demand for ARM architectures, but up to now we only support AMD64 and E386. And we also excluded some package from the security support, either because they are taking too much time, I mean they have a security issue every two weeks, and uh, well, they're very hard to support, or 
Well, or it can also be that upstream is not cooperative enough to be able to support it. This list was basically made by the current security team based on their experience of, uh, of doing security support. Uh, still, there are s if you look up this list, there are some important restrictions. There's no XAN, there's no KVM, uh, there's no Rails, uh, there's no browser, there's no ice Within and uh, Chromium, so uh, it sucks a bit. But uh, it's a way to get it started. And, but I think we can do better for Wizzy. So basically, uh, uh, there's no uh, uh, virtualization support on the host, only on the Quest. So yes, the security team helped to bootstrap the LTS team, but it's not the same team. Obviously, there are members of the security team who work also in the LTS team, and they, uh, well, we work in close cooperation. Uh, we have re regular contacts, and the, they watch our mailing list, etc. But the policies are different, and the infrastructure is separate, which is a problem, but we'll talk to this about later. So we have a dedicated mailing list, debian-lts at list.debian.org, and a dedicated IRC channel as well. You're welcome to subscribe and to join. Uh, so, if it's a new team, it means also new people, new members. So, where do they come from? <laughs> uh, the first idea was to uh, get help from people in various companies who are already doing such in-house support. Uh, we had contact with uh, Electricité de France, EDF, uh, with doing the, and we still have, but they, they, they were one of the first company who was pushing for this because they said, well, we're basically doing it already. We can share it with other companies. So the idea was really to pull security support of multiple companies. So we sent a press release asking companies to join, and we had a few response. Uh, but I come back later to how it evolved. It's not really satisfying. The other p thing we did is that we offered companies to fund the project, so bring money, and use this money to uh, pay the work of actual Debian, Debian contributors to do the security updates that we need. So <coughs> basically, we have uh, a wiki pages listing. Uh, all the way companies can help with money. Uh, but, it, well, in, in practice, most of the wanting to be, to be paid contributors join together under a single offer managed by Friction SIL, which is my own company. So, I'll explain you quickly how this works. So, basically, uh, most companies uh, who want to don't want to bother bringing uh, <coughs> uh, human resources br and bring money uh, buy long-term support contracts to co to friction, and basically we have a, a rate. Uh, I mean, you, when you give uh, 85 euros, you 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 fund one hour of LTS work. This is the current list of sponsors, if you want. Uh, top level gold sponsors, sponsoring more than uh, one day of work per month, uh, etc. So, and on the other side, we have Debian contributors that uh, are doing the work and Friction is paying them. There is a small difference between the rate to cover administrative costs, because, well, I have to and all the invoices, some customers are using PayPal, which is taking a cut, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and uh, well, what we, we, we asked uh, contributors to follow uh, some rules, and among those rules is the requirement to publish a monthly report of the work done on paid time. So they won't get paid until they have published a report. So we. Everybody can know uh, how the money has been, spe uh, has been spent. 
So yes, that's the way it works. Currently, we have seven debian contributors and about 30 uh, sponsors. So some figures. Who uploaded packages? How did it evolve since ju July last year or June last year? How is the phone thing evolving? So I just updated th th those figures uh, a few days ago because I made my, I used this talk the first time in Lyon, mini DevConf uh, in March, but I updated again. So the number of uploads, uh, it's roughly over one year, uh, one year and a half, one month. Uh, since we started in uh, July last year. And, uh, over 300 uh, uploads, so it's not so much, but still uh, almost uh, one per day, so it's significant work. Uh, I have given uh, a split here. Uh, who paid <laughs> for the work, m mostly, or who, and, uh, who did it on the left? So. Friction is uh, sponsoring most of, well, uh, Friction sponsors, of the, not Friction itself, the, the sponsor will bring money to Friction. Uh, it's doing most of the uploads. Known is a separate category for uh, grouping all maintainers. I mean, there are maintainers who are taking care of their own packages in, uh, in LTS, in Squeeze, right now. Security team is member <coughs> are members of the security team who works also within the LTS team. EDF is Electricity de France. Individuals are Debian developers that uh, have listed themselves as member of the LTS team and who did uploads not for their own package but for package of other maintainers. Creative, the German company that you know probably. Uh, they have uh, a booth here if you want a job. <laughs> uh, Toshiba, Univention, Catalyst, etc. Uh, rather lo lower figures. On the right, you have people. So the top five people are paid bar by friction. Rafael is working for EDF. Uh, Tish is a member of the security team. Kurt is an uh, open SSL maintainer, so he has a, and he keeps he maintains his own packages, so he has a lot of work. Mike is also paid by friction. Christopher Biddle is mainly maintaining the Debian security support package in Squeeze LTS. And Guyen Kong is employed by Toshiba, etc. etc. Cr mm, Christoph Berg is employed by Creative, uh, doing uh, PostgreSQL uh, maintenance. So how did it evolve over the year? Again, it's by affiliation. So the, the big blue part is people, paid contributors. And uh, you don't see it very well, but uh, the, the part about maintainers is this one. It tends to, in to, to, to do better over the months because this year we started to contact maintainers uh, Every time that we have a new plot coming up, we, 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 we ask them first, do you want to handle it yourself or do you want this? And so it's it slightly increased. But as you see, uh, the contribution of other companies have not really increased over time and rather disappeared. It's unfortunate, but uh, it looks like uh, paid contributors are more proactive than others. So, uh, in particular, with uh, EDF, they, they they do the work, but with some lag, and uh, we're faster. So they just reuse what uh, we have done, and they. So I wanted to talk with Raphael. To, I tried to 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 see how we can do better for this, but. How did it? How did the sponsorship level evolve? So we have a steady increase. That's rather nice. It's not uh, a huge amount, but it's significant because well, uh, we fund almost uh, 80 hours per month. Uh, it, it's close to our first goal. We wanted to that amount uh, to be able to sustain ourselves. Uh, if you look at the way it's uh, 
the various sponsors. We, we have a few big ones and possibly one very big. I can't give the name officially yet, so I won't. But uh, <coughs> it will be a big jump in terms of the graph. A few gold and many small and s many small sponsors. And it's really what I'm after. I don't want to be dependent on too much on one big sponsors. I really prefer many sponsors who are doing small donations, but s donations that are sustainable year after year, because we are not here for one year or two. We want to do that over the long term. So, yeah, we have uh, some figures about how many hours have been funded, funded in the start. By the way, if you have any questions, you feel free to interrupt me. I can take them at any time. Th that's it for uh, the evolution. Now, the future. So what do we expect for the future? First, keep doing what we have been <laughs> up to. Keep supporting the current set of packages. But for really long-term support, we would really like to have more supported packages. I mean, a browser would be nice for desktop deployment. <coughs> And uh, really, uh, uh, virtualization support is important so, uh, for many uh, many companies. So we should be able to support something here. Also, uh, we want to avoid some pitfalls that we had with Squeeze LTS. As you know, LTS users are currently required to add a, a separate source list entry with quiz-lts reposi repository and uh, the security.debian.org squeeze repository is unused. So it's, it should be possible for the LTS team to continue using the same repository as the security team when, she no long, when it no longer uses it. So this will be uh, <coughs> the topic uh, oh, I'm of uh, both next week. Uh, by the way, I've given the, the date. It's on Tuesday at 18 in the room up in the first floor, Amsterdam. So what's the problem with uh, supporting the current set of packages? <laughs> uh, for example, we have MySQL right now in uh, Squeeze LTS, but it's version 5.1, which is no longer supported by or Oracle. And uh, we don't even know if it's affected by security issue because um, Oracle doesn't give info on non to product releases. So this is a problem. We should consider switching to a newer version. But newer versions involve uh, library transitions, which is not really nice in uh, long-term support releases. So uh, there is some work to do yeah, if we want to do something serious. And we have other problem, other package which are similar. Uh, from time to time, we backport, uh, we, we take newer upstream versions. Uh, we did that for Wireshark, for for example. Well, this is what I said before. We, the limited scope sucks. We want to be able to support more packages, and we need more support for this. Yes. Speaking of Wireshark, can I do it? Speaking of Wireshark, we switched to VZ's version. Yes. So it's solved. Yes, exactly. That's what I just said. We, we. It used to be a problem. So that's a part I did not update since March. <laughs> um, well, again, what I just said before, so I skip it. Yes, additionally, uh, the, the problem with the separate repository is that the, there is a propagation delay to the mirrors that we don't have with security.debian.org. So uh, I will speak a bit of uh, how the team works. Uh, basically, the first step is through aging new security issue. So we have a list of CVE that comes in, and uh, they are added to a text file, data cve uh, slash cve slash list. Uh, someone dispatches those on source packages, and uh, then uh, someone else review, or usually some, in our case, it's someone else, uh, review the status in each release. Members of the LTS team review the status in Squeeze, and the members of the security team uh, review the status in Wizzy and Jesse. And then we decide what we must do with the package. 
depending on the analysis, uh, either we say, well, we need to prepare an update, so we add it to data slash DLA dash needed dot txt, and somewhat we'll have to take care of preparing the update. Or we say the issue does not apply, it not, does, not, does not affect the current version, or we ignore it because the package is unsupported, or because uh, the issue is really minor, minor and not severe enough. Sometimes it can be that the issue is already fixed in Debian due to some maintainer choices. And when we do this classification, we contact the maintainers to keep him in the loop and offer him the, the possibility to help us. Here's what uh, such the text file looks like. So uh, the bold line is the line that we are adding when we have decided what we are doing with the packages. This is all in the subversion repository uh, on Alios. Well, wh then there's someone who uh, has to prepare the security update. Basically, uh, looking for a patch, it's often y useful to be able to look up at Red Hat or Ubuntu and or upstream. Best case is upstream because there are nice upstream who are providing patches also for older versions. But uh, uh, usually uh, there are already patches available. Not always for the good version. So sometimes we have to backport it. Then we prepare new plot with this plus deb6ux suffix that we are using now for security updates, stable updates. Well, this is a rather known territory for package maintainers. This is the hardest part sometimes, testing the update and making sure that the issue is fixed. Uh, when tools have test suite, it's, it's nice, but sometimes you have to set up it yourself. Uh, sometimes it's too hard, so we tend to add a safety measure to mail the mailing list and say, okay, I've, pr I've done my best, but please double check. N it doesn't happen often that uh, we have tests, but some LTS users are willing to test it uh, before and uh, it would be really nice if you had more of those. And if you don't get any negative feedback, then we upload. Then you have to send an announce we call that DLA for Debian LTS advisory. And we have a little script, bingan DLA, that generates the templates mail, and you have to add a little bit of description and basically send it to Debian LTS announce with a GPG si signature of someone in the DD or DM key ring. Key ring. Uh, the process is rather open to all maintainers, so except the ver no, e even the, the right rights to the secure testing repository where we have this data TV list file is writable by all Debian developers on Alios. So uh, really uh, the entrance barrier is rather low for Debian maintainers and Debian developers. And yes. There's a file which is automatically updated when you generate this template and which will update the tracker on the web pages because all this data is nicely browsable on security tracker.debian.org. And it's all linked from the package tracker. That's it. So if you have your question, I'm here to answer you. Using the old client library and upgrading the server so that you have the same API for clients, but uh, or same ABI for clients, and uh, a newer server that actually gets security patches. Uh, in my head, yes, but uh, we did not look further yet. I, I really wanted to pro 
well, uh, use uh, the buff that is upcoming to discuss it because, well, as I said, uh, w w the amount of su of funding we have uh, allows us right now to keep up with security update, but we do, do not have many spare cycles for dealing with such things. But uh, it's slowly coming up. As I said, there is potentially a new uh, pl platinum sponsor, so uh, we will have a few hours uh, free to look into this, and I think it's probably the best solution. But uh, I don't know if it works in practice. I have not tried it. And since uh, LTS, the end of life of squeeze happens in February, it's not too far away, so it's possibly a, a nice solution because upgrading to a new Epson version is harder. I have a, a question about Frixian, where you have um, enough uh, contributors um, that you could uh, do more work, but you don't have the funding, or is it like you don't? Uh, you would also need more developers, or a bit of both, actually. Uh, uh, I, uh, I have. I mean, the web page has, uh, has always been very uh, clear on the rules. That, that means any Debian developers who, who has made secret uploads on its own already can apply and join the program and be funded. Uh, fortunately, I did not have too many because it would have been hard, but uh, it has been steadily growing over the months. So uh, last year there was only uh, Torsten, Olger and me, but in the meantime we, we got Ben Hutchings, which is helping us on the kernel, and a few more. So I, I'm i always uh, looking trying to make sure that uh, we don't give too much money to a single person. Because, uh, well, it's Debian, there has been dunk tank in the past. I've been involved, I know it. <laughs> uh, I don't want anyone to to have his life depend on my, my on LTS work, really. And I don't want the opposite way also, LTS to depend on a single person that can go away. So I try to limit it to, well, maximum 20, 30 hours per month for each person. And right now we're well below that, so it's good. By the way, uh, most Debian developers are currently uh, European, so the fact that uh, everything is Euro-based is fine. But uh, we have one developer who is American, and it's no problem to pay in dollars. So uh, the amount will vary with the rates, but uh, it's not a problem. And even more, uh, I'm surprised to have no contributors in the I don't know, uh, in countries where the rate of labor is way below. I mean, uh, if we have South American contributors or African or I don't know, I don't want to stigmatize anyone, but if uh, there are people uh, who could live for uh, much more, I mean, who can, if they would be paid ten hours, they they have made their months. They can still join. It's not a problem. It's, it's not a high rate because uh, we want only Europeans. It's because we want to allow everybody. And uh, if they can be paid for ten, ten hours by friction and then spend the rest of the month doing free work on Debian, the better. <laughs> so I mean, if you want to join the program, get in touch. There are details on the web pages, and uh, the more people found, the better. How do you or other developers um, motivate yourself to do this kind of LTS work? Because obviously it's important for companies um, to have stable releases, but it also, for, to me at least, doesn't seem very exciting from a technology uh, standpoint. Do you think it's uh, exciting or not exciting? I did not, I'm not sure I understood. Not exciting. Okay, I agree, it's not exciting. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> a, a, a bit of both, a bit of both. I want Debian to succeed, and I know that uh, uh, LTS support is important for Debian to succeed, so I want to make sure the project is working well and alive. But uh, clearly, the work I'm doing it, I'm doing it because, uh, let's say, the security support work, providing security update, backporting code, is for money and because I need to live. 
But organizing, organizing the, the LTS project is something I do for free because I want it for Debian, because Debian needs it. Um, hi, uh, I have a question. Who handles the, the public relations, uh, the marketing stuff of the Debian long-term support? Do you do it yourself or do you have uh, some professional help? I do not have any professional help, yeah. Okay, Basically, so uh, the way we, we, well, we could do much better, I mean, uh, in number of sponsors, I mean, there are almost no US-based sponsors, there are, and there are lots of US companies that could help, uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, it's true, uh, I'm fighting between uh, uh, my time spending free time Debian, doing LTS Debian, and uh, I... I, I contact a few companies that people suggest me to contact, but I'm not doing much things by myself. So you would benefit a lot from some professional help in the marketing department or yes. the public relations? Yes, but uh, I mean, I don't have m money for to fund this, or not much. I mean, t the, the 10 euro difference is for administrative cost, at yeah. maybe a bit for, uh, for this kind of stuff, but it doesn't make a, a, lo a whole lot for, for this. Okay, I just wanted to answer the previous question about uh, finding motivation for providing patches for LTS packages. And in my view, it's not very different from providing security patches for stable. Uh, sometimes it's a, bit, it's a bit harder because the software is a bit older, but we overcome this situation for Wireshark, for example, by updating Wireshark because it was uh, quite impossible to, to backport all the uh, security fixes. Uh, and it's, uh, I think it's part of the maintenance. If you maintain a project, you should maintain the uh, security issues in stable, and if you care a bit more, and you, if you have a little more time, you can care about it, uh, the package in uh, LTS as well. I did it uh, for Bioshark for free because it's easy for me. And it's I'm grateful, bit thank you. <laughs> Still a little bit fun. I want to point out that it's a good thing that LTS integrity is different because uh, we can have different policy. Like we said, like importing a new upstream version is uh, something we can do when, well, it, when it doesn't break uh, too much. I mean, the, the inter common line interface has not changed so so badly between both versions, so it's it was possible. It's not possible for all projects, but uh, our, uh, we're not so strict on new upstream version. And if you look at what others have been doing, I mean, in Red Hat, uh, they do import new version version quite often, in fact. Even on libraries like NSS. And so did the lack of more LTS well, support, uh, Xen support, was an issue with the companies you are working on who are sponsoring free Xen? I'm not sure I understood. Free, uh, so the, the lack of broader, so we saw uh, yeah. Their support yeah. in the LTS version was that an issue with the companies you work, you know, uh, with who are sponsoring your work? Well, yes, obviously. Uh, browser not so much. I mean, uh, most sponsors are uh, hosters and stuff like that, but they were annoyed by the lack of QEMU or Xen support. Uh, they did upgrade their host machine, but not the Quest machine on their other customers. And obviously, that would be the first priority to fix. Browser is nice, but it's also one of those cases where we just need to back to integrate newer option versions. So it's a matter of someone doing it. Uh, and I was hoping for ja Raphael Gesser to do it because uh, he, he does it for uh, Electricité de France. And uh, I'll catch him. And Count <laughs> I know him quite well. He's working in, uh, in Lyon near me, not far away. But uh, having uh, sponsors for doing the LTS work is uh, a signal of uh, the need for LTS versions. Uh, but do you have additional statistics on uh, the usage of LTS? Well, 
Mm, not really. And since LTS is not hosted on security mirrors, but on old mirrors, we don't have access to all the statistics. But uh, I know from mails, of thanks mails and st stuff like that, that it's really appreciated and used quite a lot, even from end users. I mean, there, there are users who like the antiquated GNOME stuff. <laughs> I'm fine with GNOME 3, by the way. But <laughs> And uh, yes, well, uh, it's really widely used and wi widely appreciated. I'm in time. Thanks for your attention. Um, there will be a break until five. The next talk will only start at five. So have fun.